No, no, I'll power. Czytam w czasie. I will please stand. Of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. 
the Lord be with you. I'd like to welcome you all today to <coughs> St. John's Church, Charlton, for the funeral of Patricia Cosgrave. My name is Dermot Heakin. I'm a friend of Mike's. When I was 17, we, we met up and formed a group. I'll tell you about that later on. So it's my great privilege here today uh, to do the funeral because I've known Patricia since, <coughs> since I was 17 years old. So we are gathered here today to pray for the soul of parts who has been taken away from us. Death seems so final. We know we're not going to see her again or hold her hand or hear her voice. We are left with all our memories. In our grief, we turn to the Lord, who is our Christ of mercy and forgiveness. We ask God to take part to a place of peace and rest, which is what we call heaven, the place where good people go, after they die. Even though our bodies die, the mortal soul lives on in the hearts of those who are left behind. And we commend our dear sister to our Lord to be welcomed into a place of refreshment, light and peace that we believe in as Christians. We ask our part will pass on harm through the gates of death to dwell with the blessed in light as it was promised to Abraham and his children forever. We ask that she will be raised up in a great day of judgment with all the saints who inherit the eternal kingdom promised by the death and resurrection of our blessed Lord Jesus Christ. Let us pray. O God Almighty Father, our faith professes that your Son died and rose again. Mercifully grant that through this mystery, your servant Patricia, who has fallen asleep in Christ, may rejoice to rise again through him, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. We're now going to sit down for the first reading. A reading from the prophet Isaiah. On this mountain, the Lord of hosts will prepare for all peoples a banquet of rich food. On this mountain, he will remove the morning veil covering all peoples and the shroud enwrapping all nations. He will destroy death forever. The Lord will wipe away the tears from every cheek. He will take away his people's shame everywhere on earth. For the Lord has said so. That day, it will be said, See, this is our God, in whom we hoped for salvation. The Lord is one in whom we've hoped. We exult and we rejoice that he has saved us. This is the word of the Lord.
A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. The life and death of each of us has its influence on others. If we live, we live for the Lord, and if we die, we die for the Lord. This explains why the Lord both died and came to life. It was though that he might be Lord of both the dead and the living. We shall all have to stand before the judgment seat of God. As scripture says, by my life, it is the Lord who speaks. Every knee shall bend before me and every tongue shall praise God. It is so that God, therefore, that each of us must give an account of himself. This is the word of the Lord. Please stand for the gospel. The Lord be with you. A reading of the Holy Gospel according to John. There are many rooms in my Father's house. Jesus said to his disciples, Do not let your hearts be troubled. Trust in God still and trust in me. There are many rooms in my Father's house. If they were not, I should have told you. I'm going now to prepare a place for you. And after I've gone, I've prepared your place. I shall return to take you with me, <clears throat> so that where I am, you may be too. You know the way to the place where I am going. Some have said, Lord, we do not know where you are going, so how can we know the way? And Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one can come to the Father except through me. The Gospel of the Lord. Please sit down now. <coughs> So as I said before, I, I met Mike when I was 17, so I've known this family for a very, very long time. Kids and grandkids and everybody. <laughs> so, uh, Mike has written this very nice uh, homily about his mother. I'm sure you recognize a lot of the things in the story. If not, they're being new to you. And I'll follow up with a little postscript from myself. So, here is my mum's life story. Pat Regan was born on the 13th of March, 1927, in Salford, in Hope Hospital. She was the youngest of four sisters, Josie, Teresa, and Nellie. She was only four years old when her mother, Ellen, died. And from that time on, the four Graces <coughs> were brought up by their father, Paddy, and Ellen's older sister, Lizzie. Auntie Lizzie was affectionately known as Nana to all the family. Pat's and her sisters had a very happy, secure upbringing as a tight-knit family group where life <coughs> revolved around the church and all the parish activities. Pat loved the school days at St. Joseph's, known locally as Joey's. Especially they had nun, Mother Joan, who taught Pat to pray in Gaelic as the nuns were convinced that Jesus was probably Irish and best to be on the safe side, just in case. You can tell this is written by Mike. <laughs> At the outbreak of World War II, most of the children were being evacuated to safer areas of the country, to North Wales, Blackpool, and the Lake District. However, the Regans were only going as far as the Anderson Air Raid Shelter on Jennings Street. Paddy and the girls were more afraid of being split up than they were of a German bomber. Pat had such vivid memories of the Christmas Blitz of 1914 and walking to church on Christmas Day. The church had taken a direct hit and was mostly a smouldering shell. Of a blubbered school had been destroyed by an incendiary bomb. Pat's prayers had been answered and the family were unharmed, but some of her school friends and neighbours were amongst the 684 people who perished the night before. Talk of the war years would always bring a flurry of stories from Pat, uh, Josie, Teresa and Nellie, mostly concerning air raid wardens, dried eggs, Russian books, and Nana's old pedal Singer sewing machine, turning out designer gas masks, cases for the shops on Regent Road, and dresses made of parachute silk. 
passing of friends love dancing, I would be out on a dance floor every weekend without fail. In 1948, Pat met your husband, Mike, at a dance at Our Lady of Mount Carmel, known locally as Mounts. He got to be from Salford to follow this. He had recently arrived from Rathkeel in County Limerick to work at Jackson's Engineering in Salford. And Pat was telling us only recently that she would meet up with Mike and their friends in a pub called The Pivotal of the Peak in Manchester for a quick drink before walking to the Ritz for dancing. In 1950, Pat and Mike, Sister Teresa and Sid Walker had a double wedding in St. Joseph's and settled down to married life only yards from where they'd grown up, where the family circle was as close as ever. When son Michael came along, Pat began working again as a shorthand typist. She was proud of a shorthand speed of 60 to 80 words a minute and had trained and qualified at Greg's College. She could get a job easily anyway in Manchester, mostly working as a temp through agencies, as she liked the independence and hourly pay was higher than full-time working. Eventually, in 1958, Pat was offered a regular job at a famous Lands department store on Regent Road. This was a regular job and had the advantage of being within walking distance from home and meant that she could sometimes walk home for lunch or out onto Regent Road for shopping. Pat made many lifelong friends at Lands and friends at Lands and began a family-run business. They did appear to be very good employers and this appealed to Pat, who had always been a great believer in family values. During this time, St. Joseph's Parish played a major role in the Cosgrave family life. Pat was secretary of the Women's Confraternity. Mike Senior was busy organising social and musical evenings. And Mike Junior was a member of the parish pipe band, along with cousin Tony, Jeff and Kevin. The two outstanding clergy that became great family friends were Father Janitsky and the late years Canon Eugene Dolan. Pat hated any kind of change with a vengeance, and the biggest upheaval of her life came with the light 1960s demolition and redevelopment of the Odsal area, and having to move out to St James's Parish in Pendleton. Although most of her old friends were scattered far and wide, New friends were soon made, and life soon came back to normal. She even found a new regular job working for plant hire company Carter and Bradbury on Trafford Road, and latterly of Eccles New Road East. From 1970 to 2017, Pat lived in a flat on Church Green, which he eventually bought. Mike Jr. was married to Kath, in 1974, and Pat became the grandmother of Lucy, Sean, Liam, and Cater. In 2000, Mike Senior's health began to deteriorate, but Pat was determined not to seek any outside help or even consider a nursing home. Eventually, he was admitted to Hollycourt Nursing Home in October 2008, and he passed away in December. It's hard to imagine her struggle, especially towards the end, when dementia had taken his mind completely, and he was physically and mentally a stranger in her life. Pat lived independently until September 2017, was ordering her online shopping from Asda or Tesco. She had always been at home using a typewriter, so quickly adopted, adapted to a laptop. Pat loved surfing in it for bargains and ordering a Christmas presents for the family. She always felt sorry for the poor shopping delivery man who had to climb three flights of stairs to a flat and would often ply him with cups of tea after his ordeal. Weekends would see Pat at Kath and Mike's for dinner and trips out to the seaside. She loved the Dales, Skipton and Settle, especially on market days. Best of all were the trips to Ireland, 
the car is being in county carry. She loved the driving, the ferry, and making mug, mega picnics in case anyone would faint with hunger en route. Pat was hospitalised with a perforated ulcer in 2017, and it was decided that she would make the permanent move to Cap and Mike's house in Charlton. Pat had a fall in a bedroom in last November and fractured a hip. After successful surgery the next day, she spent a month in the hospital before being admitted to Thorncliffe Grange Nursing Home in Denton. At first, she was horrified at the thought of a nursing home, but was lucky to find such an amazing place with such loving and caring staff. The family can never thank the staff enough for the comfort and love they brought to Pat in her final days. Pat was lucky to have known and loved all her nine great-grandchildren, Isabella, Daisy, Benedict, Finian, Orin, Alana, Thomas, Michael, and Louis. She loved all your video messages over Christmas, all the singing, dancing, acrobatics, funny faces, cough piercings, and tattoos. Uh, just finally, just my own little postscript as why I'm here today. When I was 17, my mother brought, bought me a guitar for Christmas. We were a very musical family. My mother played a melodeon and we were brought up singing Irish songs. So I very quickly learned to play the guitar to accompany the family with the singing. One Sunday night, we went to the Stella Maris Seamers Mission in Salford, now demolished. It was the unofficial social club for the Salford Catholic parishes. I was singing with my brother Kevin, and then Mike and Dennis got up to play. Mike did not sing in those days. He played the banjo, and Dennis played the tin whistle. So we introduced ourselves. I decided to play together and formed a group called the Moonshiners. All right, you've not heard of us. <laughs> so every Saturday night, I used to drive from Burlams and Heights to Wadsall on my Honda 50 motorbike, with a guitar strapped to the back, to Mike's house to practice in the front room with Dennis, who all lived around the corner. And his mum and dad plied us with tea and sandwiches all night long. Then on Sunday afternoon, I came down again, and we used to go to the presbytery of St. Joseph's Church, and Father Dolan would give us the keys to the school and the microphones so we could go in and practice on the stage. One day we auditioned for Opportunity Knox, a TV, TV talent show hosted by Huey Green. When we finished, Huey Green said those famous words, don't call us, we'll call you. <laughs> Which of course he didn't. Anyway, we auditioned for another show for Granada TV called First Timers. A few weeks later, we got a phone call to say we had been chosen and would have come down to Granada TV studios in Manchester to do a recording. This was 1967. Our friend, Father Dolan, offered to drive us down there. So we got there and did the recording. It was very successful. I sang the song McAlpine's Fusiliers, Mike on a banjo, and Dennis on a tin whistle. They put makeup on us. Ooh. And at the end, the lady came with a big wad of pound notes and asked us how much we needed for expenses and where had we travelled from. And quick as a flash, Mike said, let's say we come from Birmingham. <laughs> but Father Dolan was stood next to us. And we couldn't tell a line from to the priest. So I said, we all lived on a corner in Odsall. So she gave her a fiver for our trouble. A few days later, we were on TV, and so we became famous in the Salford Catholic social scene, playing in church halls and schools. Then we all went our different ways to college and seminary, but kept in touch over the years, and still get together for family socials. Now, we have the bidding prayers now. Have you got bidding prayers? Off you come. Yep.
God the Almighty Father raised Christ his son from the dead with confidence to ask him to save all his people living and dead. Grandma, we were truly blessed to have you as our grandma and great grandma to our children. We have so many memories of fun and laughter, of the funny sayings and the endless hours you spent playing games with us, always more than happy to play the part of a customer in a shop or a baddie trying to stop us tearing up the stairs in a game of dog tanyon. So many Christmas shop Christmases shopping in marks for the nice treats and then watching Bing sing on White Christmas as we put the tree up. And when we were little, one of the best things about being poorly was the big brown envelope that would arrive in the post from you with treats and usually came with a comic as well to help us feel better. We loved all the stories of your childhood growing up in the war with your sisters and all the mischief that you got up to. Grandma, tell me a funny story about you and Kitty, I would say, trying to keep you with me just a few minutes more at bedtime. And there always was one. You could give a masterclass in making a complaint the tradition that I proudly carry on. <laughs> I will be in awe sat watching you at the telephone table in the flat, usually on to the council. It isn't right, you would say, of the mess left by the bin men or of the path down to the precinct not having been gritted in the winter. You taught me that love is strength. It is loyalty and protectiveness and it is being there for your family. You're as good as the next man and better than most is the saying that your dad had instilled in you and that you instilled in us. We were the center of your universe, Grandma, and you made sure that we knew it. I take so much comfort thinking about you reunited with your beloved dad and sisters and of course, granddad. I know that you're always with us and as Ben said to me, I think Grandma settled into my heart really well now. Night, night, and God bless. So, please be kind. Grandma was a great poet, and I've had an attempt, because it only felt right. To be loved by you, Grandma, feels like being wrapped in a warm towel, a snowbed on the sofa, and having a good howl. To be loved by you, Grandma, is a blessed treat, a parcel when we were poorly with sweet things to eat. We'd return from Ireland to a lovely big spread. Grandad would tell us about the neighbour's cat that, you'd started to, that had started to be fed. I'm never jealous of your trips away, just a little bit envious, you would say. Every room you sat in became a new stage where you asked for a performance and the grandkids obeyed. An afternoon full of tea and cakes and one, two, three claps. Next minute, you'd be insisting on doing the crab. You would sit and play for hours on end and tell us stories about your sisters, the mischief you and Kitty got up to and how much you missed them. We would often listen to the tales of the boy who, and we would sit and smirk, and she would say, now listen, Lou, you mustn't have a Dettol bath, Tina and Baba too. Will you three behave yourselves? I'm watching you. To be loved by you, Grandma, means for memories we are full. They are wrapped all around us like blankets made of iron wool. Like when a ma mouse came in the garden and I kept you company on the chair, when we would play salons and I'd give you all of the oomph in your hair. <laughs> or the time Shawnee sneaked all the chocolates off the tree. Or Bobby's trip to A&E where they measured your head to prove he was fine. And what about all mum's glasses you broke mid-white wine? Or when the tree took a tumble and Lulu was shook or when Bobby turned round and gave you a look. Talk about dangerous, he declared on the stairs, and the makeshift bed and your curler-filled hair. Boiled sweets in your bag with a hanky and comb, the long goodbyes when it was time for home. We were your darlings and brought you such fun. You were so proud of Dad and the man he'd become. You'd say he's a good lad, the best lad in the world, and he chose so well picking Kath as his girl. What I'll miss most from your time on this earth are your whistling kisses and your my darling girls. Your loyalty, strength and caring ways, the protection we felt on all of our days. You'd ring when the sun set and the sky was pink. You'd say, Baba, look out the window, isn't it beautiful, don't you think? Now every time I see the sun getting ready for bed, I imagine you. 
I imagine you tracing the Lord's cross on my head. I can still feel your warmth, like the setting sun from above, to be loved by you, Grandma, a life full of mischief and a life made of love. response to the prayers is, hear our prayer. We pray for Pastor and Papa who has given a pledge for eternal life, as she may now be admitted to the comfort of the saints. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our we pray for our sister at the body of Christ, the bread of life, as she may be raised up on the last day. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our we pray for our deceased relatives and friends, and for all who have helped us, so that they may have the reward of their goodness. Lord, in your mercy. Hear we pray for the family and friends of our sister Patricia that they may be consoled in their grief by the Lord who wept up the death of his friend Lazarus. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. We say to now the Hail Mary. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now, at the hour of our death. Amen. Let us pray for a moment in silence. God, our shelter and our strength, you listen and love to cry of your people. Hear the prayers we offer for our departed sister. Cleanse her and all the faithfully parted of their sins and grant them the fullness of redemption. We make this prayer through Christ our Lord. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruits of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine, a work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Pray, brother, my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Merciful receive, we pray, O Lord, the offerings we trustingly present for the soul of your servant, Patricia, that through this sacrifice, which you ordained as the one true remedy for all, you may grant her everlasting salvation through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with Lift up your hearts. Let's give thanks to the Lord our God. It is, right it is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For it is at your summons that we come to birth, by your will that we are governed, and at your command that we return and account of sin to that earth from which we came. And when you give the sign, we who have been redeemed by the death of your Son shall be raised up to the glory of his resurrection. And so the company of the angels and saints we sing the hymn of your praise, of the Lord's end we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in him, the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly give you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, 
a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, gracious make holy, these gifts are brought to you for consecration, that they may become in the body and blood of your Son, O Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and giving you thanks, he said the blessing. I gave the chalice to his disciples saying, take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this, the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. mystery of faith. Save us, Saviour of the world, for by a cross and resurrection we have set us free. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim, by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we, who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son, and filled with his Holy Spirit, may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, the plate Saint Joseph, his spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, and with all the saints, on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. We please confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth, with your servant Francis our Pope and John our Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, in time people came for your own. <clears throat> Listen graciously to prayers of this family, whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. Remember your servant Patricia, whom you have called from this world to yourself. Cry that she, who was united with your son in a death like his, may also be one with him in his resurrection. When from the earth he will raise up in the flesh those who have died and transform our lowly body after the pattern of his own glorious body. To our departed <coughs> brothers and sisters too, and to all who please him to you at the passing from this life, he can admit to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory, when you will wipe away every tear from our eyes. For seeing you, our God, as you are, we shall be like you for all the ages and praise you without end through Christ our Lord, through whom he bestowed in the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, to you and to the Holy Spirit, all glory and honour is yours forever and ever. Our to save us command and form by divine teaching we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. And graciously grant peace in our days, and by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we wait a blessed hope in the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. 
Oh, the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. O Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not in our sins, but in the faith of your church. And graciously grant her peace and unity, in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. I am not worthy, you should enter under my roof. I shall say the word, my soul shall be healed. For all the communion, we're going to sing as I kneel before you.
Are we please stand now for the final commendation? <coughs> Lord God, your Son left us in the sacraments of his body, food for the journey, mercifully grant us strengthened by it. Our sister Patricia may come to the eternal table of Christ, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Before we go our separate ways, let us take leave of our sister. May I farewell express our affection for her, may ease our sadness and strengthen our hope. One day we shall joyfully greet her again, when the love of Christ which conquers all things, destroys even death itself. What my Redeemer lives, and on a final day of days, his voice shall make me rise again, unending joy, unceasing praise. This hope I cherish in my heart, to stand on earth my flesh restored, and not a stranger but a friend, behold my Saviour and my Lord. Let us pray. In your hands, Father of mercies, we commend our sister Patricia, in a sure and certain hope, that together with all who have died in Christ, she will rise with him on the last day. We give you thanks for the blessings which you bestowed upon her in this life. They are signs to us of your goodness and of our fellowship with the saints in Christ. Merciful Lord, turn towards us and listen to our prayers. Open the gates of paradise to your servant and help us who remain to comfort one another with the assurances of faith until we all meet in Christ and are with you and our sister forever. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. In peace, let us take Patricia to a place of rest. Now, final hymn is Patricia's favourite, Hail Glorious Saint Patrick. 